Hello everyone, welcome to EduTap and welcome to today's session. So today we are going to discuss a very important notification that has been released by the Reserve Bank of India. So RBI has issued the revised guidelines for the IDF NBFCs for the Infrastructure Debt Fund NBFCs. So what are these IDF NBFCs? Today we will have the complete clarity about these NBFCs and what are the revised guidelines. So today we will have the complete clarity about the revised guidelines also. We will understand it thoroughly from the exam's point of view. Okay, the static part as well as the changed part. So that any question that can come from this kind of notification from this kind of news article will be covered in today's session. So before going forward with the revised guidelines and what are the IDF NBFCs, do subscribe to the YouTube channel and join the Telegram channel because the PDF of the session will be uploaded in the Telegram channel okay so now coming to the news article that the reserve bank of india in consultation with the government of india has done the review of the guidelines that are applicable to the infrastructure debt fund nbfcs and they, it was seen that there is the need for the revised guidelines to be brought for the idf nbfcs and why there is the need for the revised guidelines in order to enable the idf nbfcs to play a greater role in the infrastructure sector financing of the infrastructure sector as you can see idf is what it is the infrastructure debt fund so you can understand that the infrastructure sector the idf nbfcs play a great role in the infrastructure sector and to promote the greater role of the idf nbfcs in the infrastructure sector there was the need for the revision of the guidelines that has been done by the reserve bank of india so the revision of the guidelines or the review of the guidelines happened in order to enable the idea of NBFCs to play a greater role in the financing of the infrastructure sector and to harmonize the regulations that are governing the financing of the infrastructure sector by the NBFCs. There are many other type of NBFCs like the infrastructure finance companies and such kind of NBFCs. So those categories of the NBFCs, they are following some other rules and the idea of NBFCs are following some other rules. So that should not happen. There should be harmonization of the rules and regulation that should be followed in the financing of the infrastructure sector category okay so for that also the regulations has been uh, reviewed and revised for the idea of nbfc so that there is the harmonization of the rules and regulations of the guidelines for the infrastructure sector for the financing of the infrastructure sector okay so now going forward with the idea of nbfc because first we have to understand that what are the idea of nbfc then we will understand that what are the revised guidelines okay we have understood that why it has happened why the revised guidelines have been brought coming to the idea of definition okay the infrastructure debt fund first of all it is set up either as a trust or the nbfc right now we are discussing about the idea of nbfc but you have to understand that the infrastructure debt fund they are either set up as a trust or the NBFC. Okay. Now, if they are a trust, they will be registered as the IDF mutual fund. What does mutual fund do? Mutual fund pool the money of the investors and then it invests it in the securities, in the shares, bonds and such. Okay. So, the IDF is set up either as a trust or a company. A trust-based IDF is registered as an IDF mutual fund and who regulates the mutual fund? SEBI Securities and Exchange Board of India regulates the mutual fund. Okay. Whereas a company so, idea that is set up as a company will be registered as an idea NBFC and will be regulated by the Reserve Bank of India and is regulated by the Reserve Bank of India and the RBI makes the norms, makes the rules and regulation for the idea NBFC and that's why we are only discussing about the idea NBFC because the idea mutual fund, they are registered and regulated by the Reserve Bank, by the SEBI, okay. So, IDF NBFC, now let's understand about them. They are the non-deposit taking NBFC. That means they cannot take the deposit of the public and they are permitted to do two tasks. Okay, the first task is that, let's understand that there is some public-private partnership that has happened and the National Highway Authority of India has joined hands with some private company and they, are, they have started building the National Highway and they have taken a loan from, the, from some bank for 30 years now the project has been completed and the national highway has been constructed so after the construction or the national highway has been constructed but still the bank has to keep so for 25 years more the bank has to keep the loan of the uh, 
of the public private partnership that has happened but the bank do not want to keep this loan for such a long period of time so the bank can transfer this loan or can sell this loan to the idea of nbfc so the idea of nbfc they refinance they refinance okay financing was done by bank bank provided the loan now the idea of nbfc they are refinancing post com commencement operation date infrastructure project that the infrastructure project that was the national highway it has started working and have completed at least one year of satisfactory commercial operation so you can understand that the bank is providing the loan to the public private partnership that has happened for the construction of the national highway and now the bank has sold the loan to the idf nbfc and when the idf nbfc can purchase the loan or can refinance the loan when the uh, infrastructure project has already started working and at least one year of the satisfactory commercial operations have started so this is the task of the idf nbfc it can purchase the loans it can refinance the loans okay second task that it can do so first task i hope you have understood that according to rbi idfs that is the infrastructure debt fund uh, nbfcs they would essentially act as a vehicle for refinancing the existing existing debt of the infrastructure companies thereby creating fresh headroom so that the bank has got back its money and the bank can lend to some other or new kind of infrastructure project for banks to lend to fresh infrastructure project so i hope you have understood this clearly that the idea of nbfcs they can only lend for the refinancing or they can only use the money for the refinancing of the post commencement operation date infrastructure project that have completed the operation for uh, one year at least now they can also finance for the toll operator transfer projects as the direct lender so what happens what is this tot model model what is this toll operate transfer model the right of collection and appropriation of fees so what happens that when national highway has been created there is the tolls that have been set that if you are passing through that national highway you have to give some toll right you have to give some money so the collection and the appropriation of the fees for the selected operational national highway projects constructed through the public uh, funding shall be assigned for a predetermined concession period to concessionaries that is some private company or some in private investor can purchase the uh, collection rights and appropriation rights from the nahi okay from the national highway authority of india against the upfront payment of a lump sum amount so some private company is saying that we are providing you 30 crore and just or some 50 crore 100 crore and just give us the right of the collection and appropriation of the tolls for 30 years so this is the kind of thing that is happening under the toll operate transfer that the private company or the investor is buying the right to collect and appropriate the tolls and this is bought from some government authority so now for the upfront payment from the for the 30 crore that the private company has to give to nhi for this 30 crore upfront payment the private company has to take the loan and that can be taken from the idf nbfc so i hope you have understood this that to finance the toll operate transfer to provide the money to the private company so that it can buy the right of collection and appropriation from the nhi the loan can be taken from the finance can be taken from the idf nbfc this is the idea okay i am trying to explain you in clear words you can read it here also but i hope you have understood that for this kind of payment the finance can be taken from the idea of nbfc after understanding the definition i hope you have understood what does the idea of nbfc do now coming to the guidelines so the net owned fund of the idea of nbfc shall be required to have uh, at least 300 crore so idea of nbfc they are Uh, required to have the net owned fund of at least three hundred crore. Now, in the net owned fund, it has many uh, small components. So, I hope you have studied that in the static part. If you have not studied, go and study it right now in your course or in uh, from wherever you are studying. This is a static part. So, I hope you are covering it very clearly. So, net owned fund. This is the net owned fund of the idea of NBFC. The owned fund minus the owned fund that is the shares. that the company own the uh, paid up equity capital that the company own as well as the free reserves the capital reserves that the company own minus the shares 
of the subsidiaries of the company so if the company has many subsidiaries and the company has purchased the shares of its own subsidiary that we have to minus and then we come to net owned fund so this is just the brief idea of the net owned fund i hope you are studying it in the static part of the finance okay so idea of nbfc shall be required to at least have net owned fund of 300 crore the capital to risk weighted asset ratio so crar is what it is the capital to risk weighted assets so risk weighted assets are the loans so let's say the bank is giving some loan to the government the risk that is attached to this loan is zero percent because the government cannot uh, like cannot go bankrupt or something so the government will always pay back the loan uh, if some company is taking the loan so the risk is let's say 10 percent so risk weighted assets means all the loans they have some risk attached so as per the weightage of that risk there is the risk weighted assets that are calculated so let's see the risk weighted assets that is the risk weighted loans of the uh, nbfc is 100 crores against this 100 crores 15 percent of the capital adequacy ratio has to be maintained so that is 15 lakhs or 15 crores sorry has to be maintained by the company so i hope you have understood this clearly that capital adequacy ratio is the capital that is maintained against the risk weighted assets against the loans or the assets uh, that have some risk attached so against that the capital has to be maintained by the company even the banks have to maintain some capital against their risk weighted asset. So idea of NBFC shall be required to have the capital to risk weighted asset ratio of minimum 15%. So minimum 15% of the CRAR, the idea of NBFC have to maintain with minimum of tier 1 capital. Tier 1 capital is the most liquid kind of capital that the NBFC has, that the NBFC can use for any kind of distress that is coming on the NBFC. So tier 1 capital is the most liquid kind of capital that the NBFCs can use in the distress kind of situation. So the tier 1 capital of 10% has to be maintained. Okay, 15% total capital with the minimum of 10% of the cap, uh, tier 1 capital. Okay, so this is the guidelines. We have started with the guidelines. I hope you will remember this very clearly. Okay, so guidelines regarding the raising of funds. Now we have said that the idea of NBFC cannot take the deposits of the public. It is a non-deposit taking NBFC. How is it raising the loans? Like how is it raising the money? Banks take our deposit and they lend. Okay, so the banks take our deposit, they use that deposit to lend. Now the NBFC, IDF NBFC cannot take the deposits. So how it is lending, how it is financing the loans and such. So see, what the idea of NBFC can do, it can raise the funds through issue of either the rupee denominated bonds or the dollar denominated bonds. So it can issue the bonds and raise the money through that. Bonds are what? The debt that is being taken by the idea of NBFC. So the uh, idea of NBFC can raise the bonds of minimum 5 year maturity and can use these uh, money to provide for the financing and earn the higher interest from there. Okay. With a view to facilitate better asset liability management so that they have the short term finance also. Because the 5 year maturity means that these are the bonds for the long term. So if they require the money at the short term, so what they will do? So they can, the idea of NBFCs can raise the funds through shorter tenor bonds. They can release the shorter tenor bonds and the commercial papers that are the short term uh, instrument through which they can raise the loans from the domestic market to the extent of up to 10% of the total outstanding borrowings. So try to understand this. 100% of the borrowing they can do. 90% of the borrowing they should they are doing from the INR denominated bonds that are rupee denominated bonds and the dollar denominated bonds that are released by the Indian companies by the IDF and BFCs in some other countries. Okay. So that are the dollar denominated bonds. So and out of 100%, out of 100% of the total outstanding borrowings, only 10% of the borrowings can be done in the short term period. Okay, because this INR and dollar denominated bonds, they, are, they have the 5 year maturity. Okay, so I hope you have become very clear with this, that out of the total outstanding borrowings, only 10% can be in the form of the short term bonds or the commercial papers. Other borrowing can be done in the form of the INR, 
denominated bonds or the dollar denominated bonds with the maturity of 5 years okay now coming to the next point in addition to the bond route the idea of nbfcs can also raise the funds through the loan route under external commercial borrowings so the third category of like 100 percent of the borrowing now from in this let's say 50 percent is happening in the bonds and 40 percent is done through the ecb that is the external commercial borrowing okay external commercial borrowing means that the companies in our country they are buying from some other they are borrowing from some other country they are borrowing from the investors of some other country they are borrowing from uh, the foreign investors we can say okay so the idea of nbfcs can also raise the funds through loan route under the external commercial borrowings however such borrowing shall be subject to minimum tenor of five years that is also the long term uh, route we can say okay so like the inr denominated bonds dollar denominated bonds and the ecb external commercial borrowing they are for the minimum of five years and the ecb loans should not be sourced from foreign branches of indian banks because if you want to take the loan from the indian banks take in take it in india why take it why why you are taking it from the foreign branch of the indian bank okay so i hope you have understood this clearly and the borrowings of the idf nbfc it can be from the inr denominated bonds dollar denominated bonds or it can be from the ecb and in the short term it can be from the uh, short term bonds and the commercial paper okay the regarding ecbs idf nbfcs shall also be required to adhere to the guidelines that are issued by the foreign exchange department of the reserve bank of india so they also have to take the permission or they also have to follow the guidelines of the foreign exchange department so next category is regarding the exposure limit so the exposure limit that is the loans that can be given to a single borrower single borrower or a single party so if a single party that is a big let's say that uh, there is a big project that is happening and the idea of nbfc is refinancing that big project okay so single borrower or single party the maximum exposure limit is 30 percent of the tier one capital that can be given to the single borrower or single party and 50 percent of the tier one capital can be the maximum exposure limit uh, for the single group uh, of borrowers or the single group of parties okay of the party so i hope you have understood that the single borrower or single party that is one individual uh, one borrower or a party they can only have 30 percent of the tier one capital as the total exposure from one idf npfc if we are talking about the group of borrowers that there are the group of companies that are coming okay as one entity so the group of borrowers or the single group of parties they can have the exposure limit or the maximum exposure they can have from one idf nbfc is 50 percent of the tier one capital of that idf nbfc let's say the tier one capital that one idf nbfc is keeping is 50 crore so out of that only 50 percent of this 50 crore can be taken by a single group of borrowers so that is the idea okay next is uh, tripartite agreement so under the earlier guidelines an idea of nbfc was required to be sponsored by a bank or uh, nbfc infrastructure finance company so this kind of rule has been withdrawn uh, by the reserve bank of india now there is no requirement no necessary requirement of having a sponsor as well as the shareholders of the idea of nbfcs they shall be subjected to scrutiny as the other nbfcs are subjected to as the other shareholders of the NBFCs are subjected to the scrutiny. So the rules and regulations, they are being harmonized for all the NBFCs, even the idea of NBFCs. So now the idea of NBFCs do not require to compulsorily have a sponsor, but the shareholders of the idea of NBFCs will be under the scrutiny from the Reserve Bank of India as applicable to other NBFCs. Earlier, the idea of NBFCs, they were required to enter into a tripartite agreement with the concessionary. So, concessionary is the private company that is engaged in the, uh, the public-private partnership. Project authority, so here the project authority is the NHI, the National Highway Authority of India for the investment in the public-private partnership. Okay, so before there was a requirement of to enter into a tripartite agreement that is one is the idea of nbfc the other party is the 
project authority and the third party is some kind of uh, private authority private company that is coming into the agreement with the project authority with the nhi and they are they are jointly conducting some kind of infrastructure project so i hope you have understood that the idf nbfcs were required to enter into a tripartite agreement where there were there will be three parties idf nbfc project authority such as nhi and the private company that is coming in the uh, public private partnership for the investments in the public private partnership infrastructure projects having a project authority the requirement of the tripartite agreement has now been made optional so there is no compulsory requirement to get into the tripartite agreement okay so i hope you will be easily able to answer so try to answer this question you have to tell the minimum crar and the minimum uh, requirement of the tier 1 capital for the idea of nbfcs okay the second question is regarding the guidelines the revised guidelines that has been released for the idea of nbfcs so you have to answer this question so these are the two homework questions that you have to answer and there is a big announcement from edutab that we have brought for you the comprehensive guidebook for rbi in abad in sebi so that through a single guidebook you can cover all your understanding for your examination okay if you want to know about the syllabus for the examination if you want to know about the strategy for the examination but what sources to follow for the examination even if you want to have the previous year questions everything is provided through this single guidebook you do not have to visit different links you do not have to visit different websites okay so do download this guidebook this is provided absolutely free of cost and you can easily download this guidebook the link is provided in the description box below so thank you very much for today and i hope you have understood the basic idea of the idea of nbfcs and the revised guidelines for the idea of nbfcs so thank you very much if you have any query you can mail us here or you can contact us through this number thank you very much